the campus, okay? I'll talk about that towards the end. Are you all from Forsan then? Yes. Excellent. So, right, this, this is not a presentation in that I'm going to stand here and just talk at you. This is going to feel a little bit more like a university seminar. Okay, so it's a little bit of what it might feel like to be at a university. And I am a, I'm a great believer in learning through experience. And I'll talk to that a bit later on in this presentation. But a big part of what I like to do is to get you guys involved in the seminar. So I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. I'm going to get your opinions, your thoughts. University is not about being spoon-fed information. Now, of course, we have to teach you lots of things, and there is information that we have to get out to you that you have to absorb, but a lot of that you will pick up through reflective practice, through criticality, through engaging in conversation, and through actually thinking. So this might seem a bit cheesy, this learn how to think, not what to think, but it's actually very accurate. It's actually very important. Okay? What we need to do, if I can get people just to move as close to the front as they possibly can, that would be... That'd be great. Okay, can everyone at the back hear me okay? okay? I'm generally quite good at throwing my voice. If if for some reason you can't hear me, please don't hesitate to put your hand up and let me know, okay? But I prefer not to use the microphone if I can avoid it. So I was just, just saying to the everyone else in the room already, my name is James. I work for the British University in Egypt. I have an academic background, I also have a commercial background. I'll tell you a little bit more about my past in a bit. I was just explaining the idea that this is going to be a little bit more like a university lecture than a, it's not some sort of sales presentation. I'm not going to do that to you, okay? This is more about a bit of a learning experience and getting your thoughts and opinions and hopefully getting you to go away and do some thinking again. What we're trying to do is get you to learn how to think and not necessarily what to think. So, we're going to talk today, at least in the first in instance, about influence. What does influence mean to you? Any volunteers on that? I put a definition up there. What do you think about when you think about influence? Peer pressure. Peer pressure. Good. What else? Mind manipulation. Good. Manipulation. Interesting word. What else? Come on, throw it at me, please. You're smart people. Show me what you know. What you think. Fun? You don't know. <laughs> okay, fine. Anyone else got any ideas? What, what does influence mean to you? What do you associate influence with? Uh, Come on, you're always on your phones looking at TikTok, freaking social all the media. time. Social media, okay. What else? Big pun? Feel free to throw it out there. Anybody else? Come on, what else do you just, okay, what do you associate with influence? Friends. Friends. Pardon? Sorry. Faculty. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> effect. <laughs> effect. <laughs> How people impact you, yeah? Okay, keep, come on. We're going to get into a habit here. By the end of this session, you'll be screaming out answers at me. Power. Power. Pardon? Power. Power. Power is a great word. We're going to come back to that, actually. Power. Okay. So influence. So we've got a, we've got a, a dictionary definition here. This idea of changing, causing change, yeah, affecting someone or something. You guys are affected by the influences, yeah? You're affected by influence, yeah? And you, that may not be direct. 
Okay, there's loads and loads of definitions around this, and lots of them seem quite insidious in terms of being feeling like it's a word that talks about manipulation. This idea of causing change without somebody necessarily, well, it being direct and necessarily without a person knowing. That's quite a scary concept. So, who? Who influences you? Your friends. Influences your friends. What else influences? Families. Parents, family, yep. What else is influencing you? Big one? The social media. Okay. Anything else? Schools, society, broadly, okay, it's fairly comprehensive. There's loads of things influencing you all the time. Teachers, yeah. Sorry? What was that? Somebody chatted up saying good? Events like this one, exactly. Exactly. There's all these streams constantly of influence. Yeah? Constantly information coming at you. The constant marketing that's around you all the time. The constant streams of information you're getting. The constant ads. The people saying stuff on your social media. Your friends. Your family. Your parents. Teachers. There's lots and lots of different streams. And what are, what are, what are these different, should we call them stakeholders? What are these different stakeholders trying to influence you on? What is it they're trying to influence you on? So maybe to join something? Maybe I'm here to help to influence you to join the BUE. What else? What are the things you influence on? What, what are these influences influencing you about? Come on, I'm trying to get you to think about this. Come on, don't rely on a couple of star figures in the room. Style. Style, okay, yep, style. Habits, okay, interesting. Lifestyle. Lifestyle, okay, lifestyle again is broad. But lifestyle, huge influence on your lifestyle. Come on. Think about it. Again, it's pretty much everything. There's influence out there trying to push you towards most things that are going on. They're trying to get you to buy stuff. They're trying to get you to invest in stuff. They're trying to get you to, to be a certain way, to look a certain way. Huge amounts of influence constantly on us, yeah? From these various influencers, these various stakeholders, okay? So, I'm going to get a little bit more academic in a minute. I've tried to keep this as, as sort of lowbrow as I can, but in a moment I'm going to go a little bit academic on you. So, how do they influence you? So TikTok, so that's more of a tool, I suppose. But yeah, okay, so TikTok, so social media, okay, yep. How else do they actually, how else are you actually influenced? School, okay, so these, again, these are sort of tools for influence. How else are you influenced? What tool, what is actually used to influence you? Advice, okay. Your phones, okay. Advertising, marketing, okay. So we're getting back to the the, the, the different stakeholders almost of, of influence. Okay, I'm going to switch this a little bit. I'm going to turn this and use some very simple, very basic elements, academic discussion here. So we're going to talk about power. We're going to talk about a really old... Really old bit of theory from Raven. Still very, very useful bit of theory around power. And it's really interesting, particularly in Egypt, to talk about power because the power dynamics that operate within all organizations, within society itself, 
It's quite profound. But having a little bit of a thought and a bit of an understanding about power and how power is used to influence you is quite useful. So I've related some theory here to our discussion around influence. So if we talk about Raven's five and now it's six forms of power, the first form of power we'll talk about is legitimate power. So this is the idea that people will influence you because they have a legitimate right to do so, i.e. they hold a role or a title that allows them to do it. So within my organization, the CEO of my organization, or COO of my organization, has a huge amount of power over me. Legitimate power, that power has been bestowed on them by their title. So that's an example. You've then got this idea of reward as a form of power. So you will be influenced by the idea that there's a reward at the end of what you do. Okay, so it's another form of power. So if there is a reward at the end of it, you will be influenced or you will be directed to do something. Yeah? You've then got the idea of expert power. So as a professor, and believe it or not, I'm a professor in business, okay? I have a PhD in engineering, I have a degree in engineering, I have lots of other fancy titles and all the nonsense that becomes bestowed upon you when you get older and you make it through your career, yeah? A lot of that power that I have in terms of right now and having an audience and my influence comes from what should be expert power, the knowledge that I have, okay? There's something called referent power. And that's where you are influenced, where the power is held over you by people through things that are a little bit intangible. Often it's, it can be things like looks. So you will be influenced by people because of the way they look. Why do you think they use beautiful models in advertising? Yeah, or famous celebrities. They use these people because they have an influence of you. And that power is what we might refer to referent power. So it can be looks or charisma, charm. It's things that are a little bit intangible, actually. Well, that's under the referent power. You've then got coercive power, which is the idea that you can be influenced or pushed or make decisions because of coercion, which is negative. So if you think the reward, the reward is the carrot. Have you heard of the concept of carrot and stick? Basically a horse will go for the carrot, run from the stick. Well, the idea is that this is the stick. So fear, fear of missing out. FOMO, if you like, yeah? These sort of concepts, that's coercive. And then finally, we have informational power. So the idea of power that comes along, this was the sixth one that was added in later on and is particularly relevant now. This idea that information is power, given the internet, we all know the power of the internet. Yeah, this idea of informational power is massive. Yeah, the fact that your decision making and your influence can be guided by information that's being fed to you through your social media or whatever else. The fact that there's algorithms gradually guiding you in a particular direction, you tend to hear more and more of the same thing, whatever it is that thing is. Again, the power of information is massive. So just trying to relate some theory on power just into that space on influence. We could talk about this for hours and hours days. This, these are discussion pieces for days and days. So I've got a question for you. Why do people influence you? To get you to do something. To get you to do something. Why do they get you to do, why do they want to get you to do something? What influences influences? 
money, profit. Benefits, okay. What else? Is it always money? Fame, okay. What else? Do you not think that sometimes people want to influence you for positive reasons, maybe? I, I, I'm trying to put a positive spin on it. It's really easy to quite, get quite negative about it. I think you're right. In most cases, it probably is money, fame, and power, sadly. But there are people out there who do want to influence you for, for good. I'm sure of that. But I think the idea that these streams of information that you're receiving all the time coming in, a lot of that is not necessarily for your good. Not necessarily. I'm not saying you can't, the information's not useful to you, but you have to be aware of why that information is being fed to you. So I'm going to talk to a few concepts that you might come into at university as we go through this. I'll mention a few sort of key words. Awareness isn't really one of them. But this idea of being aware, I think, is really, really important for young people because you get so much information, like insane amounts of information constantly being fed at you. When I was young, we didn't have a fraction of this information at our fingertips. But you've got masses of it coming at you constantly. And a lot of it is about making money. So you have to be aware of what's going on around you. This is for your own safety, you know, and your own financial security. But being aware is really, really powerful. And being present, actually being in the moment, being aware of what's going on around you is critical on lots of levels. So it's just a bit of general guidance, I suppose, there. This idea that you've got agency. These are the sort of concepts and things you'll talk about at university. The idea that you have the right to make your own decisions, that you will take information. You can be critical with that information and make your own decisions. The concept of diversity. So I'm going to bring in this concept of diversity again. When it comes to influence, yeah? I'm really sorry, guys. If you don't want to be in here, you're welcome to leave. Yeah? I'm sorry, but that's the sort of thing also you get pulled up on at university. Yeah, if you don't want to be here, you can go. It's always the same at university. You don't, no one's going to lock you in the classroom. If you don't want to turn up to your lectures, if you're not interested, don't rock up. But no one's going to chase you for it. Okay? So this idea of diversity. So in this context, I'm talking about the diversity of thought. So that you... The reality is you are going to have all this information coming at you. You are going to have all these people trying to influence you for their own reasons. You would hope that your parents obviously want to influence you for very good reasons, but you don't know if the next person on TikTok is trying to influence you just to make money. But you've got all these streams of, inf of information coming at you from all different angles. And the positive side of that is that you have lots of diverse forms of information. You have to battle the algorithms that try to prevent you from getting that diversity. But the reality is you've got that diversity out there. So, for example, if you were to book a hotel room, are you going to go with the hotel that's got 10 out of 10 with two reviews or 9.5 out of 10 or 9 out of 10, let's say, with 2,000 reviews? You're going to go for the nine, right? Why are you going to go for the nine? And why is that valuable? More people More people with that for themselves. Yeah. Okay. So you've got diversity of opinion. If you've just got one person's opinion, and the same, the opposite is true. If you had a hotel that only had one review and had one out of ten, you also couldn't make any sensible assumption about the value or the how good that hotel really is either. So you want lots and lots of opinions. So having lots of opinions is not a bad thing. That diversity of opinion is really powerful. It's really powerful in lots of different ways. I mean, we talk about diversity in lots of ways. I have a very diverse team of people that work for me. 
and it means that we come in on very, very interesting solutions to problems because you've got lots of different angles. You don't end up with a one-dimensional approach to everything. Yeah. Now I'm aware that you guys have aspirations about what you want to do with your lives, yeah? Do you all know what you want to do at university? Okay. Okay. How about you guys? Everyone else? You all? What? What? Can I ask what year group you're in? Shabazz. So you're all year twelve, and you're still not quite sure what to do at uni. Okay. That's good. That's not. That's definitely not a bad thing. Like I'm very old, and I still don't know what I want to do with my life. So I don't expect you guys to know fully yet, right? Okay, but the trouble is you've got to make a decision, yeah? So obviously you've got all these people, all these stakeholders influencing you on where to go and what to do. There is a reason for me of talking about that other stuff, by the way, it wasn't, wasn't purely me rambling on, yeah? It does link in. I did think about this before I wrote it. You've got to, you've got to make some decisions. It's not gonna be easy. Okay, it's really not going to be easy. And people often ask me, you know, well, how do I decide? Should I do medicine or should I do art or whatever? Yeah? There's very difficult for you to make that decision. But you've got lots of different stakeholders. You've got lots of information coming in. You can at least get the information. You might have to work a little bit harder in some times than others. But there's lots of information out there on the internet, at events, through telephone calls, through your mates all sorts of ways of getting that information, but there's tons of information out there, but you've got to make a decision. Have you guys ever heard of a Japanese concept called Ikigai? Okay, this is quite a nice little tool that you might want to use just to try and think about what you might want to do going forwards. It may get overruled by other stakeholders, other aspects of your life, but it's worth a thought. Now, Ikigai is the idea of looking at four different facets. So you have a little bit of a think about what it is you love to do. The things that you enjoy, the things that you love, your passions. The second aspect is what you're good at. The things that you excel at, the things you're getting the top grades in. Yeah? So if you imagine those two points at the corners of a square, yeah? You've got to think about what you can actually make a living from as well. So that's the third corner of this square, okay? And then you need to have a bit of a think, or you should have a bit of a think, about what society actually needs. And you'll find there's potentially a bit of overlap there with what makes money anyway. But this hypothesis, this Ikigai theory, the idea of this is that if you can find that sweet spot in the middle of all those things, that overlapping point, then you have the best chance of happiness. I'm not saying this is the answer, the, this is the holy grail, this is the gospel, this isn't, but it is it is one way of trying to think about how you might approach those sort of decisions and other decisions that you might have in your life. But if you can think about those different aspects, it might help just guide you towards you, what you may want to do. Now, that what society needs bit, well, actually, no, I may have got these slides a bit out of order. So, can I ask those of you who have decided what you want to do actually, what do you want to study? Has anyone decided yet? Is there anybody who's really? Computer science. Computer science. Okay. Why? Just out of curiosity. Why? Because you're good at it. You're good at it. Yeah. Okay. We got business. So I'm sorry, I'm just going to follow up with you. Sorry, what's your name? Omar. Thank you, Omar. So Omar has got a thinks he's got a talent for it. I'm not going to dispute that, so let's assume he has a talent for it. Um, 
There must be other reasons. Why, why else? Because it, uh, it makes me more free later on in life because I can start a business of my own. Okay. It has more, the most opportunities. So you think it can create a nice lifestyle for you as well? Yes. Okay. Do you actually enjoy it? Not so much. You don't enjoy it? That's very interesting. Do you think you're going to be able to carry on with that for the rest of your life if you don't enjoy it? Yes. You really? Yes. Very interesting. Or do you think that it's going to lead to something else? What do you mean? Do you think that you're going to be able to use it to go into business or something else? Yes, that's right. Okay. It's the lifestyle I want, not the job. It's the lifestyle you're after. That's very interesting. Okay, fair enough. Do you think society needs it at the moment? You're probably bang on the money there. Uh, and do you think you can make a buck out of it? Yeah. And I think you're probably right there. Isn't it? Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else thought about what it is that they that they're going to do at university? Have I lit? So that I please. I'm sorry. AI. So you want to go into AI? Why do you want to go into that? Again, it's just out of my curiosity. You're good at it and you enjoy it. Do you think society needs it? Okay. We certainly need people working on AI in certain ways, that's for sure. Um, and do you think you can make some money out of it? Okay. So maybe you found the sweet spot. Maybe you found that little sweet spot in the Ikigai model. So, sir, you, you were talking about business. So, and you want to go into business again? What do you mean? What, when you say business, what do you want to do? Okay. Do you, do you think you're going to enjoy that? You don't know. Okay, interesting. Why do you want to do it then? Because I'm not good at math. Because you're not good at math. There's loads of things to do. That... <laughs> you're not good what? At biology. At biology. I'm pretty sure there's lots of other things for you to think about that you could do, actually. Lots of other career paths. There's lots of things you can do in business without being an administrator. Yeah? You could be a specialist in HR. You could go into nursing. There are a million different things. I'm not saying you would do that. Pardon? You want to be a dentist, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I had this feeling you might want to be a dentist. Hmm? Yeah. You, you, struck me as, you, you struck me as a bold, high achiever, so... And that's where the uh, I, uh, we meet a lot of people who want to apply for dentistry. So we have dentistry at BUE. We, we are, we'll come to that bit if you want. But yeah, the dentistry at BUE is very impressive. So I promise not to do any hard sales. Look, this is kind of this is almost like a breakdown of my resume. Okay, so I've done quite a few different things, and in some ways, I want to show you that your, your pathway through life won't necessarily be linear, okay? You think you're gonna be something after doing all of this university thing, yeah? And you think that's the only thing you're gonna be. You will weave your way through your life, yeah? In an attempt to potentially find your way into that middle bit of that ikigai model, potentially, yeah? Because you will chop and change. You will change your views on things. And you'll evolve and learn, obviously. I've been lucky enough to work in lots of different countries, gained loads of experience working in different countries, had leadership roles of all sorts of different levels, and done loads of different things. But obviously, I started out very focused on engineering. Yeah? And now, I guess my job really now is about influencing. Influencing my team, so leading my team, influencing young people into hopefully making good decisions. I have a question. Please. Uh, why didn't you pursue uh, engineering? Yeah, because what I didn't realize at the time is that I am not a things person. What do you mean? So it's very typical for males to be very things orientated and for women to be very people orientated, yeah? That's a bit of an archetype. Don't get me wrong, there's massives of overlap there. But I thought I was interested in things. I thought I was interested in, in 
in, not interested in the people bit of the world. I was interested in STEM. I was interested in science. At the time, I was super interested in bicycle design. As you saw, you know, I, I raced in bike racing teams. I ran teams. I was super interested in bike racing designs. I worked with a guy that made bikes for the Olympic racing team. That was what I spent my summers doing. And I thought I was so interested in the technology. I was so interested in carbon fiber composites. But, and I was okay at it, right? And I probably could have made a bit of money out of it. But what I didn't realize at the time, I guess, is how good I was with people. Or at least I thought it, I feel, at least I hope I am. But I think I'm okay with people. I see one of my colleagues is here, so I'm hoping he's gonna back me up. <laughs> uh, so I think I'm okay with people, right? So I discovered that my talents were somewhere else, basically. My true talents, yeah? I was okay, obviously I got a PhD in engineering, so I must've been all right at it. But I, you know, for me, that, that wasn't where my skills really lie. And in, in fact, many people would have said, I got my PhD because I worked in a really good research group and I managed to talk myself into a really good research group and I managed to get all of the people in the research group working for me because I was really good with people. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, so that was a really nice question. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, the point is that you will weave your way through life and you do lots of different things throughout your life. It's not a linear relationship between what you start with and what you end up with. I'm going to ask you guys another sort of probing questions. I know we're sort of, we're ripping through quite a few different subjects here. What do you think the challenges are for your generation? I'm going to ask Jumana. Jamal is one of, one of our uh, students. He's one of my student ambassadors. Um, the yeah, economic situation. Yeah. Classic. I would have expected no less from a political science. What else? Anybody, anything else that's bothering you about your future? So this is an exercise in trying to get you to look beyond the confines of your immediate thoughts, right? <laughs> what else is going on in the world that should be of concern to you or would, could be of concern to you? Uh, the, the power investment in the currency. So the currency. So the economic thing. Okay, so we'll, let's just box that under economics just for the time being. What else? So we've got a Russia-Ukraine. Come on, don't let my student hog the floor. The earthquake. Okay, yes, earthquakes. You're right, there's some, I get that. What else? Come on, we had a massive conference about it in this country recently. Russia? Russia, we've already mentioned, but Russia, yes, of course. Well, when I say Russia, the conflict in Russia and Ukraine. I, climate change, thank you. I just have curiosity, does climate change actually bother you? Do you consider it a concern? It's really interesting because if I was in the UK, that would be the first thing any anybody would say in the room: climate change, global warming, climate change, global warming. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. How about you guys? Any thoughts? What else? What sort of things concern you? I'm okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot because you talked about AI. Does anything concern you about AI? How do you feel? I mean, what have you guys thought about what your job prospects will look like in the future? Come on, you've got all this information. Like you can go on to the, you can go on to, you can go to TikTok and find a gazillion different sources of information. Could be run by AI. I mean, AI. I mean, AI is the big talk at the moment with this. Uh, with Chad GP, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Say again, please. So everything might be expensive. I still missed that. You have to shout it out, please. 
to build robots. Okay, so st stuff might be expensive. Please, at the back. So taking away people's jobs, that's a terrifying cost prospect for me. Terrifying prospect of AI and ro robotics, you know? We've already, jobs have changed so much already. If you think about jobs 100 years ago, everybody was doing everything with their hands. People were working in coal mines. They were plowing the fields. Gender now, inequality. Gender inequality, okay. Okay. Definitely gender inequality, definitely inequality broadly, but gender inequality as well, I think. Women's rights. You're right. You're right. You're very right. Particularly in certain countries. Particularly in certain countries. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to focus in on AI in a minute. But you that you you're raising good points and not disputing that at all. Uh, back to the AI though and the robotics. Just because, yeah, I think there is people. The jobs have changed, and this comes back to your careers and the jobs and things. Okay. And you have to recognize things are going to continue to change. You need to be aware of that. Like, again, you need to have that awareness. You need to know that you have agency, that you have to make your own decisions about that and think about that sort of stuff. If you want to stay ahead of the game, if you want to find your ikigai and you want to be happy and you want to make some money and you still want to have value to society. Yeah. So... You, it's important that you think about what's going to go on in the future. On a brighter note, though, somewhere along here. Oh, yeah. So these are the challenges. Sorry. Thought I put these in here. You have to see those challenges also as opportunities. So it's not all bad. So whilst machines may be taking away roles, AI may be taking away jobs. There are now jobs in AI development, for example. And what we need is people who can think about the um, think about the ethics, think about the, the value of that within society and make sure it's positive. So you've got to see the opportunities and things. Things are changing and you want to be at the front end of that change. So there are lots of challenges, but there will be jobs. So jobs in engineering, for example, have changed significantly. When I was younger, there were a lot more jobs in petrochemical engineering, for example. Now the jobs in petrochemical engineering, there are still plenty of jobs there, but it's all about the transition from petrochemical into other areas of energy production. There are now degrees on, on sustainability, for example, on wind turbines degrees on, you know, how to get into photovoltaics. So solar systems, basically, solar, solar power, basically. So you can move into new areas. So things are developing. So it's just trying to get you to think about some of these newer areas of opportunity. And university is supposed to help you to try and get you to think about all of this kind of stuff. The whole point of coming to university is to get you to start to think and to open your mind to be able to solve problems for yourself and for your employers or whoever it is in the future. And I hope that a good many of you will start to think about starting your own business. You don't necessarily have to go and work for other people. If you want to get rich, definitely don't go and work for somebody else. If you want to get rich, don't go and work for somebody else. Make it your aspiration to start your own business. You will not really ever get rich working for someone else. You will have safety, you will have security though. You can gain security. But if you want to be very, very wealthy, you're not going to do that working for somebody else. Very, very rarely does that happen. I'm not saying it's utterly impossible, but very rarely. But in terms of security, being an entrepreneur, starting your own business, that isn't the way to go. Yeah, if you want security, maybe you want to get that nine to five and have that regular income. I'm seeing a potential entrepreneur, I can see it there. 
But again, universities should equip you with the skills that you need to be able to think about doing these things. So again, within university life, within the university environment, you will attend lectures. Yeah, and the lectures will give you some of the technical skills that you need. Yeah, but they should also teach you throughout your program about a number of other things. So another, a number of other skills. I'm aware this is going on probably too long. I don't like to lecture more than about 40 minutes. It's too long. Yeah. But these are the sort of things that employers are looking for. Okay, alongside your technical competence. So again, lots of key skills there, lots of things about being open-minded, lots of adaptable. Of course, you need to be able to work in a team, you need to be able to be a leader, like problem solving, all those sort of things. But what's interesting, if you do an analysis on what is required for a good entrepreneur, you'll find a lot of the same things are required. Most organizations seem to be fundamentally looking for entrepreneurs to work in their organization, intrapreneurs, if you like. So you're learning a whole set of skills that will be valuable to you, and your university should provide for you a whole set of skills. No matter what subject you're studying, you should pick up a lot of these skills, yeah? And that should help you in your careers going forwards. So just to get you to think, so at Brit the British University in Egypt, we've got lots of different degree programs. We're a comprehensive university. We teach almost everything. And it would be great if you can come and visit us. I know you guys from your school, you will come and visit us. You're welcome to come and talk to us on the stand. We are comprehensive and we teach most everything. But have a think sometimes about the things that are not so mainstream that universities have to offer. For us, we've got things like sustainable engineering. We have subjects like political science. We've got AI and computer science. We have programs that are maybe a little bit more thoughtful about the future. Now, I'm not saying we're going to suddenly stop needing dentists. Yeah, We're not going to suddenly stop needing petrochemical engineers. Those jobs are not going to go away but there are lots of other jobs that are also going to present opportunities in the future. So what I'm saying is, again, just open your minds, be aware, be careful about the influences, yeah? And just try to make good decisions based on as much information as you can possibly get. Go to every single one of these university stands and squeeze them for information. You've got to make a really big decision, yeah? You're going to spend a shed load of money, yeah? And actually, more important, important than the money is the lost opportunity cost. You are going to spend four, five, or six years at university studying when you could be making money. You could be earning, okay? And you have to weigh up the pros and cons of that. And ultimately, university can be very beneficial, but you've got to remember that it's a very big thing to do to go to university. Don't take it for granted. It's a really big thing to do. It's a huge amount of your life that you're going to spend. It's a really productive, powerful time in your life that you're going to spend at university. So get as much information as you can now and don't rush to one of these universities. Just find out whatever you can from the people at the stands. Go and visit them. Don't join a university that you have not visited. Talk to the faculty, talk to the students, get a real flavor for whether that's the right fit, the right place for you as well. Okay, that's just general advice. I hope that many of you come to BUE. I know you won't all come. And my job is not necessary. I'm not gonna pressure anyone to go in anywhere. So I just want you to make the best decisions that you can. Okay? Now, believe it or not, there are still some of us who actually care about young people doing well. I just want to see you all do well in your future. Because I've got young children, and I need for your generation to make a better job of the world than my generation did for you. So it's a bit of an ask, really. But, but if there's any consolation, my parents made an even worse mess of it than we have. 
<laughs> all right? So of course, my name is James. Uh, I'll be on the stand a little bit today. Um, my team are around as well, but if you ever want to ask any questions, you can get hold of us through any of these contacts. Um, we have numerous open days and visits, so you're welcome to come and join us whenever you like. We do private visits as well, so if you come, just one or two of you will come with your parents. More than happy to show you around, get you to meet, meet faculty, meet students, whatever works for you. So thank you for listening to me. I hope I wasn't too boring, and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.